Tamara here, and it's time for you to learn about Tamara's best class, and that is the Pickets. So Tamara actually has surprisingly good growth rates. If you look at her growth, she has 55 HP, 25 strength, which is okay, 45 dex and speed, 30 defense, res, and luck, and 10% build. So just looking at her build and her speed, she's already quite fast, but then when you factor in Picket, you're looking at 40% strength growth, which is pretty pretty good. Uh, 40, I'm sorry, 55 dex and speed, 50% defense, then 35 res lock, 15 build. So she has respectable build. Her build starts off maybe like slightly above average, like maybe one or two points over units with low build. But as she levels up, you know, 20 times, she's going to be seeing three points of build increase and she will level up 20 times throughout a run pretty easily. And in some cases, like 30 times. So it depends on how often you use her, but... Let's go over her weapons. Um, so, okay, so why should you use this class? So Tamara is a tanky fast unit that can deal good damage when using lance power, and she can consistently enemy phase very well. She has higher defense than all of the other like fast units. She's the she's the highest defense fast unit, and that is very meaningful in a game where you know there are things with like weaknesses. So if you have like flyers, there's flyer weakness. If you have horses, there's horse weakness. She has no weaknesses as a land unit, like as a mounted, or I'm sorry, a foot unit, foot blocked unit. And she can enemy phase very well across a variety of builds. Uh, as for weapons, I would say Fensilar is her best weapon. And Javelin, these are the tools that mostly enable her to kill. Fensilar is lightweight, so her low build stat starting off, I think it's like seven. This thing can get down to seven weight pretty easily. I think if you plus three it, it's like seven weight. So you can get this thing's weight down, so it's basically weightless. The Javelin has nine weight, so she can use both of these. She can trigger sandstorms or just attack in one round off a of lance power. Uh, she can also use the Brave Lance to quad enemies. Now, this requires either Leaf or Sigurd or some kind of you know, substantial build or speed increase so that she can offset the heavy weight of the Brave Lance. But essentially, this lets her hit four times. And even if you were to deal very low damage, as long as you trigger one to two sandstorms, which can be easily achieved using probability, if you can get your dex high enough, she can kill through low damage. Or if you run lance power and you can quad, you can deal plus 40 damage because lance power five is plus 10 damage per hit and quadding is four like hitting four times. So you're base 40 damage. So pretty powerful off of sandstorm trigger, off of just lance power in general. And if you can just get her strength up in like a different way, it can also be strong. Uh, the Well Lance is good for her. You do want to upgrade it to like plus three. It becomes really expensive to upgrade beyond that, but it reduces its weight and increases its stats. This can be viable. Steel Lance can be a good option if you don't have the Well, if you don't run the Well, or if you don't run Hero Weapons. Uh, Rider's Bane is a good like secondary weapon just to like stab mounted things. So. It's going to be hard to double with it because it's kind of heavy, but if you get her like a Sigurd build or something like that, she can double with this in one round a lot of things that are mounted. Uh, for secondary weapons, like these I would say are like primary weapons you should always run. Uh, Brionic is really good, but it's quite heavy, so if you're running a Sigurd build, she can get away with this. This is very late game too. You get it after chapter 22, so you only really get it for a few chapters. Silver Lance can be just as good as Steel, but it's just more expensive to upgrade, and it ends up being stronger and slightly heavier. Killer Lance can be good if you get its damage up high enough, so she can trigger Sandstorms or crits, and she can also trigger Sandstorm crits, and they do multiply each other. So, like, Sandstorm scales the damage, and then crit scales the damage, so you can get insane crit numbers. And then Flame Lance can be good for attacking armor with Lance Power, even if she has kind of, like, lower magic, because it's still plus 10 damage per hit, plus you're targeting the res, so some kind, sometimes it can be situationally useful. For Engravings... I think the leaf engraving is really good on Fensilar. I think that's like her main weapon she wants to use. Uh, the the big reason for this is this is a damage increase, but it also increases weight, and Fensilar gets so light in weight that it doesn't matter uh, if you increase its weight by one. This gives you a damage increase. That's very important. Sigurd is good, but it also reduces weight. So you could run this on like the Well Lance, for example. You could, you could run it on Fensilar, but it's... Weight, it's weight reduction isn't going to help at all because she's already, it's already going to be weightless, so that's why it's not the first option. Marth is good because it's just a damage increase, a damage hit crit increase without a weight increase, so this is also good. 
any one of these is like if you plan on using her as your main tank or like a hard carry i would run one of these on her alternatively you can run lucina on her to reduce the weight of a heavy weapon while also giving her hit plus 30 and avoid plus 30. she usually doesn't have hit issues so you'd really be using this for avoid plus 30. and then you could also use celica to reduce incoming crits on her to practically zero while also weight fixing so this reduces the weight by one and the damage by one and also gives her plus 50 crit avoid so this can be useful for like nullifying crits as well as weight fixing for passives i think lance power and speed plus or lance power and speed taker are the way to go for all of her builds i don't recommend anything else <laughs> now if you want to do something else you could run gentility so gentility is nice because you can get plus three to five damage through bravery mode or blue skies when your erica unit is engaged so you can allow or you can enable her to tank better and get some like bonus damage on enemy phase but obviously you'd want gentility plus which is bond level 18 and getting lance power 3 is like bond level 10 so you know you can still get a damage increase as well as a damage decrease on incoming attacks when blue skies is enabled to make her even more tanky so if her ike is not engaged like if her ike is down and she's like recovering you can have gentility mode activated so or gentility plus activated or blue skies so she's minus five damage that helps her off tank when ike is not there uh, but she already is quite high defense generally speaking but this can help for damage increase and damage reduction lunar brace can be good but it's only good on player phase and most of the builds like most of the way i use her is as an enemy phase tank so i don't value this very highly but you could run this if you want her to be a player phase nuke uh, Cantor is always good for repositioning after attacking. Lance Agility is an interesting option. You can combine this with like Lucina engraving and get like plus 60 avoid. And then you factor in her high speed and you're looking at very high dodge rates. So she's like less, way less likely to get hit. And incoming hit rates would be like 5 to 50% on average uh, for the last row. Holdout is always good if you want to have a good agile free card for dying. Dual assist can be good for extending the range of dual assists or i'm sorry chain attacks uh, dual support can be good if you want to scale up her avoid now this can scale better than lance power but she does need to be near multiple people and then of course defense plus is nice because sandstorm damage is calculated by her defense and defense plus five is actually quite cheap and it's on ike so you could run that like so you don't want to run speed for whatever reason or lance power you just want her to be tanky uh, you could do that but i do think lance power and speed plus five are the best way to go alternatively lance power and speed taker are fine okay for emblems i think the best emblem for her is ike and she does start with it and all she needs is a little bit of a speed increase to double more consistently and then she just wants lance power after chapter 17 and even before chapter 17 you want to upgrade her javelin to like plus three to five so that when she enemy phases she doubles and she either almost kills things or she kills things. Uh, so most of the enemies before chapter 17 are quite weak. There's very few that are strong. And even if she doesn't kill them, you can easily level her up quickly by just doing Lin's Paralogue and having her tank the top left corner on Ike. And she will rapidly level up because the enemies there are quite high level. So she'll hit pick at five and then unlock Sandstorm. And then from there, it's game over and it's easy. <laughs> you have like one of the best tanks in the game. <laughs> Now, if you just want to level her up organically, you can do that. You'll probably get her online by like chapter, I don't know, 15, 16. She'll be sandstorming, but she'll still be doubling and one rounding a lot of things on enemy phase with a, a javelin plus five. Uh, I'm sorry, plus three. Plus five is if you want to ensure she one rounds pretty much everything, like archers. So like she one rounds at one to two range for most things. And if she doesn't, she can trigger sandstorms to do so. And when, you ha when you're on player phase, you can attack with Fensilar to one round pretty consistently uh, ike also improves strength so getting bond level 10 immediately gives her a little bit more damage uh, and then when you factor in the sandstorms and then once you get lance power it's over like she's just cracked uh, sigurd is really good he enables you to get cancer plus for free you get momentum damage so your initial hit, the first hit of your doubling or quadding will deal increased damage uh, he also can trigger sandstorm when overriding multiple foes which is nice uh, he also gives a build increase, he gives a defense increase, and he gives a dex increase. So, and he gives you movement plus one. 
so he makes this is Sigurd's the more aggressive option, but she can still off tank on him because he still gives defense increase and his dex increase increases her chance to trigger sandstorm. And the build increase makes pretty much any any one of these lances weightless. So he's a really good alternate that's not as contested as Ike, because a lot of people like to run Ike. There's also the option of Roy. Roy, I think, is slept on in this use case. He can give you strength plus six, which addresses her damage issue if you have an issue with her damage. But personally, on Javelin plus three with like speed plus three, she's usually good enough in the, those early middle game chapters to one round like mages, archers, most enemy foot soldiers that aren't tanks. So I've never had this issue, but Roy can give you strength plus six. And then when you use, when you engage with him and you get the rise above, like the level plus five, you get like plus two more points of strength, I believe, and then plus three speed. So Roy actually increases your stats <laughs> and makes you an off tank. You also get holdout plus 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 for free. Um, so if you were to die at anything other than one health, it just puts you at one health. So you can tank like, you know, two to three enemies easily. So this, these top three options I think are the best. Ike for main tank, Sigurd for dive tank, and then Roy for off tank. And they all increase damage and fix some aspect of her or help improve some aspect of her. Uh, also the rise above thing. So what it does is it scales all of your level ups. So it also gives her plus three decks. It gives her plus three decks, plus three speed. Uh, gives you so you level up it simulates leveling up five times so in fixed mode um, it would just look at your percentages so in this case 55 speed times three um, or I'm sorry times five you would end up with like you know two point something 2.6 2.7 speed and it rounds up so that's how it calculates the level ups because um, ex the XP growth I'm sorry the the stat growth it's like a 55 gives you 55 progress out of 100. Once it hits 100, you get a level up. So that's how it calculates that on fixed mode. I do believe you get a point of build as well. Because five five level ups at 15 build would be over 50%, which would round up to one. So I think, I think Rise Above also gives you a build. It definitely gives you plus three defense, plus three speed, plus three dex, and plus three health. And I believe just plus two strength because it's two... It would be four times five, which is 20. So that's just, you know, or 200 divided by whatever. So it'd just be divided by 100 gives you two points of strength. So you get two strength. So you get damage increase, you get health increase, you get everything increase. So it's kind of like, you know, pretty good bruiser option. And I would, I would argue Roy is not highly contested either. So these are two solid options if you have like a dedicated Ike unit and you don't want to run her as your main tank. Erica is a good option because if you just use Lunar Brace, you get huge damage increase. Erica does not increase speed, but she increases dex, which is useful because that helps play into her dex role. Also, gentility, blue skies. So if, if you engage on Erica, you get minus five damage with gentility plus, plus five damage with bravery plus. And then if you attack, you get lunar brace plus, assuming you've done Erica's paralog. And lunar brace plus, in addition to the plus five damage, is enough to damage fixer where you could just run like speed plus five and like speed taker if you wanted. So she'd be like super fast. Uh, or you could just run Speed Taker on Erica, and then you probably wouldn't even need Lance Power because of the damage increase, because you're looking at plus five damage with Bravery when attacking when engaged, and then you're looking at 20 or 30% of your opponent's defense as extra damage. So if you attack your average enemy with like 20 to 30 defense, you're looking at like plus six to nine damage, uh, depending on if you have base or Lunar Brace Plus, and you also heal if you're engaged. So like. Erica enables her to be very aggressive as well, and Erica is generally one of the best damage fixing things in the game. She can fix mage damage, she can fix physical damage. Um, Lucina is a good option because you get speed and dex. Now, this is not the best option for bonded shield strats, but if you don't want to use bonded shield, let's say you banned it because you think it's too overpowered, you could run Lucina because she gives speed and dex, which does play into, you know, Tamara's need for speed to keep her doubling those very fast enemies. And also the dex increases her trigger rate. And then, of course, uh, Martha is good because you get strength and speed. Uh, let's see what else you get. I always forget the third stat because you only get them for a few chapters. Let's see. Marth. Oh, my God. He gives dex, too. Dude, he's perfect, actually. He gives dex, speed, and strength. And then caps out a plus three strength, plus four dex, plus four speed. So, so if Marth had better availability, he would be much higher in this list. But he's also a good option for her because he increases all the things she wants. <laughs> but these are the engravings, these are the passives, the weapons, or I'm sorry, the emblems, the engravings, the weapons, the passives. 
Uh, overall, I would rate this unit at S tier. Uh, I think I'd, I said I bumped her down to A because of Marin tank, but honestly, just because Marin can also tank doesn't mean that Tamara can't also tank. And one nice thing about like Lance Sword Axe Power is that you can get most of the value out of it without that many bond fragments because you just need to get the bond level 10 to get Lance Axe Sword Power 3, which is plus 6 damage per hit, and usually you can sit on that for an entire playthrough and you're fine. Like, that's, that's usually enough. And then if you want to, you can boost it up into the further, like the higher levels, but... It's a very it's a very easy build to get online, especially if you do like Lance Power Five Speed Taker. Um, now you will have to set up some early kills to double like Speed Takers to double those very fast enemies. Uh, speed plus five is just to keep her doubling, you know, like basic things that are reasonably fast. Uh, but she is fast enough that with Speed plus five she'll double most things, like seventy to eighty percent of enemies on the map, excluding like super fast enemies. And, but in which case, very few units can double those. So you could always do like a tonic, you could do like a debuff or something like that, or you could do like a rally speed. Uh, there's a, there's different ways to get speed up to double those like super fast like wolves and thieves and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this Tamara video. Definitely subscribe if you enjoyed this or found this useful. And I'll see you in the next one.